The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Today I'm starting a project to build a quadcopter from scratch. I have a basic idea of how I want the project to come together, but I need to take my time and test everything because I've never built a flying contraption before. So we'll start today by looking at all the parts we'll need. But first, the news. Today on Ben News, I'd like to show you this new Raspberry Pi laptop portable thing that I built. It has a form factor like an old 80s toy. Opens and closes the lid. It's got a seven inch touch screen here, uh, HDMI with a keyboard. And I've got all the ports out to the edges so you can use it like almost like a little computer. So yeah, it's just another fun project that I did using the Raspberry Pi. Many of you have written in asking us to build a quadcopter on the show, so we're finally going to do it. A quadcopter is kind of like a helicopter except for it uses four motors to provide lift and it moves around by changing the speed at which the motors rotate. Let's look at the parts we'll need to build our quadcopter. Here's a layout of all the parts that I believe will make a quadricopter. I'm still learning. So here in the middle, we have kind of the brain. This takes the signals from your remote controller and levels the system using three, what I assume are gyroscopes of some kind. It's actually got an AVR 18 mega 328 on there, the world's most beloved microcontroller. So that's kind of like the brain, the in-flight brain. And then that hooks up to these uh, motor controllers these have the large power inputs from the power supply, and then it also goes to the motor here using these bullet connectors, which I'll need to get more of. All the connections basically look like servo connections. So I think all this quadricopter stuff is derived from uh, model planes, and those would just use servos. You've seen us use servos many times on the show before. So like on a model plane, you'd have a servo in the center, and as it rotated left and right, it would cause like the, uh, what are these things called? The ailerons to move up and down on the plane. So it looks like it's just been adapted for quadricopter use. Uh, we have these motors. Uh, there's four of them, obviously. And I'm gonna have to figure out the best way to mount these to the propellers. I might need to make a, a 3D printed adapter, but I'll figure that out. And the propeller blades are 10 inches in diameter, so they obviously need to be spaced out at a certain distance so they don't hit each other, but probably something like this. And then I'm probably gonna try to make some sort of guard for the propeller so if you crash the machine the propeller is either breaking themselves or slicing someone to ribbons will be less of a problem uh, here is the receiver this gets the signals from the transmitter and again it's basically just hooking up servos and i believe ground goes on the far right like that then we have our transmitter i just got uh, an inexpensive one online and again these are just potentiometers that make that control servos that's really all there is to it and they've already been linked up. Um, we have a lithium polymer battery pack. We'll probably try to center that as best we can. And then this will need a plug so we can hook up to the main power here. And then we have this leftover from an old project, uh, lithium polymer battery charger. So we'll use this to charge that up. And we all wanna make sure that it has the right number of, oh wait, no, this one's automatic. This one's really smart, it knows how to charge. But you need to hook up the um, leveling tester as well. So when you charge the battery, you actually have to plug it into here as well. So I believe this is all the basic parts. So the first thing we're going to do is um, basically, you know, get them all set up and maybe try a test wiring, get some connectors first, and see if I can get it to do something. I'm going to have to adapt these motors to work with my propellers. There's a little clip here that I need to remove in order to move the shaft. The reason I have to move the shaft is because the motor rotates like this. See how this whole frame moves around? So I can attach it here to my frame but I need the shaft to poke out this way in order for it to work with the propeller. So first I have to remove this little clip and then I can move the shaft. I'll pull the motor apart. Ah, there we go. So we want the shaft up here so it rotates with the main body so we can attach it down here. So I'm gonna attach one of these bearings in the bottom to hold the shaft in place. And then we will have successfully flipped around the shaft. I'll tighten this set screw, there we go. All right, we flip the shaft around. I will do this for all four motors. I've readjusted the shafts on the motors and now I can do a test. So here's how the wiring works. You have your lithium polymer battery, which I charged up. 
and it goes into the electronic speed controller. The speed controller basically drives the DC motor and it also gives us a five volt power source which we can use to drive either our transmitter or our flight control brain. So just for a test, we can plug this into the transmitter. I'm gonna plug it into channel three. So this is basically a servo wire, so it's got ground, voltage, and the signal. So this will power this. I'm gonna turn on my transmitter, throttles all the way down, plug in the battery. Okay, there we go. All right, let's give it a test. Slow but sure. Whoa, that goes off fast. Let's see if it's actually variable. Okay, that's all the more I'm going to test it without it bolted to something, but it looks like everything works. So I'm gonna hook up the rest of the four motors and then we'll go from there. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. So this unit here is the radio receiver. This is what gets the signals from the remote control that you hold in your hands. And this has six channels, uh, four of which are typically used with a RC plane. Uh, aileron, which are on the wings. Elevator, which makes it go up and down. Rudder, which makes it uh, turn or yaw. And throttle, which is the power. Now what happens with a quadricopter is those signals are kind of hacked to be used for the quadricopter. And that's where this little blue thing comes in. That's the flight controller brain. And it's got an AVR on it. Basically, it takes the standard RC plane signals and converts them into flight data to control the quadricopter. And it also has three gyroscopes on it. So if it senses itself tipping and it's not supposed to be tipping, it will compensate for that, allegedly. So I've noticed a lot of uh, quadricopters that I've seen online are a tangle of wires. So I guess my take on it will be to try to make it less a tangle of wires. So I'm gonna start by wiring the radio receiver itself right into the control board. So it's all one piece. You ready, Boots? Start walking. Do, 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 there we go. The radio receiver has been combined with the flight controller, so it takes up less space. Ah, I like it when things are nice and compact. So the motor test demonstrated a lot of power, so we need a way to hold it down. I'm going to use this very basic rig, just so we can hook the motors up to it and test that all the electronics are working before I actually make a good quadricopter frame. And I'm using uh, basswood. This is kind of what I feel like using. And it kind of looks like two tongue depressors stuck together, but you know, whatever. And um, there should be plenty of distance between the propellers. So it looks like the propellers and these motors will give us about 3.5 pounds of thrust or lift. So the total weight of everything we build has to be less than that in order for it to actually ascend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these parts and put them on the scale and see how much they weigh. And then however much is left, that lets me know how much the frame can weigh. Battery, obviously the heaviest part. Half a pound. Pound is 16 ounces. Yes, and a can of pop is 12 ounces. Why do they say ounces? Why don't they just have like 1.5 pounds? That's what I would do if I was in charge of standards and practices. Of course, then, you know, I'd be like, oh, just use metric system, but that's another conversation. Okay, we are at one point, oh, I'm sorry, one pound, six ounces, not 1.6 pounds. All right, so uh, we have roughly two more pounds to work with. Obviously, I don't want this to weigh that much, but I think a pound would be safe. So we can keep our frame under a pound, we'll be good. Let's just see what this weighs as is. This is like one of those weigh-ins, you know, like when the boxers fight, it's like, oh, I weigh 280 pounds, rock. Ah, 4.6 ounces. So we could make this frame four times as big and we'd still be at about one pound, which is good. So I think we'll go in that direction. We'll need cross members here and here, landing gear, and if it's possible, it'd be cool to have some sort of shield. So if you run, the, if you run it into somebody, they don't get stabbed. But again, it's all about weight. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to mount the four motors into this frame so we can 
check to see if it works with all four axes and we can try the tilting. We won't put the propellers on, we'll put pieces of tape to make it safe. But we should be able to see if it does what it's supposed to do. So like if, it, if you tilt it down, it should increase this speed and decrease this speed and vice versa. Basically to check to see if the electronics are working. I have bullet connectors between all of the motors and the motor drivers. Now I'm attaching all the motor drivers to the central power hub that I bought. Therefore, we can attach the battery directly to this and everything will be powered. Then we can do a four motor test. It's a giant flying tongue depressor. We're ready to do a test with all four motors. I have them marked in the direction that they need to rotate. They don't all rotate the same way because if they did this thing, we'd be like, Bleh! they kind of balance each other. And you can change the way their motor rotates by switching two of the wires on the three phase connectors that power the motors. So for starters, we're just gonna test it and see if it works. So I'm gonna plug in my power supply. I don't have a switch yet. Okay. So you have to arm it. Uh, you turn your receiver on, you turn the throttle all the way down and then push to the right. The light will come on. Then you enable your throttle. Okay, this guy's not moving. Okay. <laughs> Why is this guy not moving? Cold solder joint or something? Okay, I'm gonna check and see which direction they're moving to make sure they're right. Okay, that one's going the right way. That one's going the wrong way. That one's going the right way and that one's not even moving. So to switch the rotation of this one, I'm going to switch two of these leads here. I'll just do that first before I try to fix this one. Still not sure why this guy's not going. I'm gonna do a rotation test. Armed, okay, enable. Okay, those three are rotating the way they're supposed to. Not sure why this guy's not rotating. So I'm gonna swap the motor around to see if it's the controller or the motor. So we've tested our transmitter, the receiver, the flight control brain, the motor controllers, and the motors. We have them rotating the way they should. These are counterclockwise, these are clockwise. So our next step will be designing the quadcopter frame. Today's viewer question comes from the Ben Heck Show's Facebook page. Shreyans asks, can an AT Mega 328 be powered by a switching power supply and what precautions should be taken? Yes, it can, and switching power supplies are a great choice for size and efficiency. As a precaution, it's always a good idea to have capacitors on your power regulator, even if the output should be clean. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll design the frame for the quadcopter, put it all together, and hopefully do a test flight. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.